Welcome back to the Tour Breakaway, <clears throat> Perry Nice, Stage One, Race to the Sun, eight stages. We've got world class sprinters, we've got world class GC contenders in this first big week long lead up race to Tour de France. And we're going to go through a whole set of what we're looking at for Perry Nice here, but absolutely insane stage one. Can't wait to get to it. Max Schachman, two time reigning champion, uh, but it's not that simple. We'll remember last year heading into the final day. We had seen absolute domination by Primoz Roglic. Heading into the final day, he had three wins under his belt, nearly a minute lead in the GC, but crashed just as many times as he had stage wins on that final day, left totally exposed, effectively left for dead in no man's land. It was candidly hard to watch for anyone who remembers it. If you watched it, you would never forget it. But that left the door open for Shockman to take home victory. They'll have a chance to fight it out again this week. What we learned from that, and just like we'll see today, Anything can happen in Perry Nice. Absolute insanity. So before we get to stage one, let's take a quick look at the overall route and the contenders, just because, hey, we didn't do a preview show. But before going into that, if you're a new listener, welcome. Please drop down, drop a subscribe. Come along for this journey. Heading to the big races of the year. Come along, have some fun, share with a friend. Uh, but most importantly, give a subscribe, leave a comment with your thoughts, even a rating. Really appreciate that. So let's take a look at the route. Stage one. This is where we were today. Punchy sporting stage ends in a flat, but you've got a few categorized climbs before you get there. You got two cat threes early on and then a long flat section. Maybe crosswinds would be a factor, maybe not. And then as you head into the final 30K, you've got two sprint points and two cat threes. Uh, before ending into a flat for the final roughly five kilometers. So presumably a stage that can end in a bunch sprint. A lot of folks talking about today's stage ending in a bunch sprint, but you've got to get over navigation of these cat threes first. So always an opportunity for some punchers to make some, uh, make some things difficult. Stage two, pretty much pancake flat. You've got two little rollers at the very beginning and then a small ramp into the finish. Uh, should be one for the sprinters. Stage three, welcome the punchers, the rollers. You've got uh, three cat three rollers, but it's mixed in with a whole bunch of uneven surfaces um, and a ramp up to the finale. Uh, really difficult day for just a sprinter to win. So this is where folks who tend to take the GC at Perry Nice can shine. Look for the likes of Shockman and, and others to be making up time there. Uh, that also looks like it has Wout Van Aert written all over it then stage four and this is where we'll start seeing some separations um into the 13 kilometer time trial um not crazy altitude adjustments but a little ramp at the finale where you've just got to go up a seven percent ramp in the final kilometer uh, but will certainly make a difference for riders then into the into the hard part of racing you get to stage five we've got three cat one climbs a cat two and a cat three so we're really hitting the altitude here uh but notably you end on a flat you know, the the cat one is is followed by uh, another hill but then descent and flat finale so opportunities uh, for folks to bring it back together uh, but also interestingly will be opportunities for folks to be aggressive early on and try to break the race apart uh to try to test separate how they can get separation from the likes of a, of a primo's road glitch or whoever might have the gc lead at that time and of course depending on the race dynamics now continue on stage six still in the mountains here we go we're gonna have three cat two climbs on this day as well as cat threes um so more of the more of the same what we saw here and similarly after the last categorized climb you've got another bump and then this not just a flat run into the finish but a little bit of a descent finish only when we get to stage seven do we see a mountaintop finish. Col de Torini, you've got 15 Ks at 7.2%. To me, that's the kind of climb that looks perfect for like Jawa Almeida. Um, you think you're going to see Adam Yates looking pretty good here as well. Um, and we'll see what the race situation has, because that's going to be a, a factor into who's attacking and who's not. Uh, but certainly a big differentiator. Last year, this is it was stage seven we saw. Uh, Primo's Roglic victorious. I think that was when he chased down Gino Mater in the final kilometers. And you would think that this is queen stage and seals everything up. But as you remember, last year when Primo's crashed on stage eight, all was still to play for. Um, and stage eight is by no means 
a lay in. You've got two cat ones on the final day and three cat twos. So looking at that, even though it finishes on a long descent and then flat run into the finale, all is still to play for. And what we tend to see are, are time gaps that are not so significant. Seconds matter in, in races like this, uh, where GC is often earned by well under a minute. Um, so there will still be movements um, and attacking for final placings. Overall, who's got a shot? Well, in GC, we've got Primo's Roglic. So you could argue you've got Wout Van Aert on, on Team Jumbo Bismo as well. Max Schachman, can he make it three Perry Nieces in a row? I have my doubts. Uh, you've got Adam Yates as the lead man for Ineos, uh, but also there with Danny Martinez. So we'll see how they work together or how that plays out. A guy who can absolutely animate this race and has no competition for GC leadership, Nairo Quintana. Definitely expect him to be an animator. He coming off two big wins, both with stage wins and the overall GC wins at Tour de la Provence and uh, Maritimes Haut Var in the Alps. Uh, so that's an, that's going to be great to see. I'm pretty bullish on on Quintana this year. I think he's definitely coming into the season with better form than he did into 2021 when he had quietly had knee surgery in the offseason. But he's looking in good form um, and rolling back the clock. Interesting one to watch is going to be the UAE squad. You've got both Jao Almeida and Brandon McNulty. McNulty looking awesome coming off two wins where he's gone solo and looked absolute beast mode. Um, and then you compare that against Jao Almeida, who at the UAE Tour finished just off the podium but was in complete service of Tade Pogacar. So Jao looking good but not had the opportunity to shine. Riders with relatively similar skill sets, strong on the TT, um, kind of consistent, strong uh climbers interesting to see how they play that um and and if they commit to one of them for this race or if they both just have a go at it and then i think vlasov here has got a shot he's cleaning up that time trial a bit um and absolutely a factor uh when it comes to climbs you know having scored some podiums uh himself here in the early season and then uh further down the list you got the likes of like a david gaudu lutsenko simon yates um, and then, of course, Jack Haig and Ben O'Connor. That would be an interesting one to watch after his fourth place in the Tour de France last year. How would he be looking um, here in in the in the days ahead? Uh, and and can he back that effort up? I don't know. I don't. Not hearing too much talk about him. Um, it'll be interesting to see. And this will be the first week kind of showing if if that uh, if that was something that we can expect him to repeat for. Uh, the AG2R squad. So yeah, it's going to be interesting because you've got a couple of teams where it's not really clear. How do you, who do you commit to? How do you commit? Um, and it'll be a big test for uh, those who are, who are left solo uh, like Nairo man and how they want to attack and win. Now on the other side, and this is looking into today, would this be the big first shot for the sprinters? We do have a world-class set of sprinters here. Wout Van Aert, Jasper Philipson, Fabio Jakobsen, Sonny Cobrelli, Mads Peterson, Sam Bennett, Dylan Gronewagen. Matteo Trentin coming off a big win. How would this look? Looking at the stat sheet and like for a day like today, you got to look at Fabio Jakobsen as the big favorite for the sprinters. Looking at this, he's got to be looking his chops saying, hey, I could win three stages. He's got his best sprint crew. They're not committed for GC. They are here to make wins for Fabio. Um, on the other side of that, you got Dylan Gronewagen looking pretty good from the Saudi tour, picking up a couple wins um, with, with the uh, Bike Exchange Jayco squad. Uh, he's going to be hungry. And then Sam Bennett, he's kind of got a win here this week. He needs to get some wins under his belt um, after coming up dry in the UAE tour. So time would tell. So let's get into it. And starting today, it was slow. And you you, you kind of look at the stage and you're like, okay, yeah, it'll be kind of in the later bits that things will get exciting. But it was an absolute snoozer. Um, early in the stage, we had Amy DeGent, Matthew Holmes out front. That came back together. Then three others went off the front, Fedorov, Friesen, and Gugard. And completely non-threatening attack from them. Um, now, unfortunately, and this is all the way already down with 50K to go, touch of wheels during a nature break. Felix Groschartner went down, looked like a collarbone. First casualty of the race. Um, fast forward, literally up to 30K, where we're heading into the two sprint points and the two cat threes before the presumed sprint finish. And we still had the three guys up front and a completely relaxed Peloton. Like nobody wanted to do the work. 
and the lead ballooned. I mean, they had like a minute and 15 lead. Nobody wanted to do anything. And they were kind of on the, you know, you, when you see that block across the front of the Peloton, you know, everyone's just soft pedaling. Like there was no string out. And you fast forward another 10K and you could have taken a nap. I mean, over the the uh, second to last KOM at 22K, nothing had really happened. The leader still had a minute 15 over the Peloton and still that visibly conservative riding. So finally, Dekoinik and Yumbo pick it up with 20K to go. Rohan Dennis starts pounding the pedals at the front, trying to make it hard and drive it to 10K and finally pull back the escapees. And I love that move by Yumbo because at first I'm thinking like, hey, why are they not making this whole run in like consistently hard from like 50K to go and just making a race of it? And I like the thinking, let's make it super hard for a short period, force some guys out the back and eliminate printers with this turn of speed because at the end of the day you look at this the guys that you got and you want to win with Wout Van Art you might as well put some other guys in difficulty who can't do the things that Wout can do over that final climb so it worked like they started spitting guys out the out the back Stefan Biesiger the only man to beat Ghana in a time trial this season he gets on the front he's absolutely pulling faces that pushes Cobrelli out the back we're just inside 10 kilometers and we're seeing this whole thing string out heading into this Cat 3 finale. Now, it's pretty conservative. It's just 1.2 kilometers at 6%. But you look at the front of this race, and you've got Wout sitting on se in second wheel on Mike Toynison, who led him to victory out on the Champs-Élysées last year. And with 7K to go, this thing's totally strung out. You see Michael Morkow going out the back. So this goes from, from having being what was perceived to be a bunch sprint to potentially having GC implications. and. As you hit the base of this climb, this 1.2 at 6%, Van Hoydonk takes his turn, stops it out on the front, and you're just looking at, okay, when the attack's going to happen. Christoph Laporte picks it up just off the base of this climb, and it's really just Roglic and Wout Van Aert over his shoulder. And they, everyone, there's one Dekoinik rider who sticks on for a bit, but then quickly Adam Yates trying to close the gap because this has gone from a bunch sprint to a non-sprinter's day, to having GC implications. You see Gronewegen out the back. You see Fabio really going backwards on the climb. And you get to the top, and it is three riders over the top. It is three Yabo Visma riders over the top. It is Christoph Laporte, Wout Van Aert, Primoz Roglic. And it's like, holy cow, these guys are going to time time trial to the finish. This is absolutely insane. With five kilometers to go, they've gone completely clear. So behind, after they get over the top of this, the main group comes back together, but you've got these three guys who are just going to time trail it to the finish. And <laughs> you got to feel bad for Christoph Laporte. Literally got to be wondering like, F my life. How did I end up here? I'm doing a team time trial with Wout Van Aert and Primoz Roglic. And they're all trying to catch their breath and just flicking elbows. Like you work, you work, you work. And Christoph Laporte has this look on his face. Like you got to be kidding me. Like I just pulled this over, over this coal and you need me to work. I'm absolutely cooked. I have no business being here, but clearly Christoph Laporte is in amazing form. And so these three just work together and bring it into a lead three and a half kilometers to go 15 seconds. That extends to 20 seconds with 2k to go. And then it just became a question of who's going to get the win, right? Like, do you give it to Laporte, you know, as a thank you. And also because it isn't, you know, it's a world tour win. That's a big deal for him. Um, or do you give it to Wout or Rog? I think the right answer is you give it to Roglic. Like you don't want to leave anything to chance, particularly with what happened last year. You want Roglic to get those bonus points. This is important. Uh, so you, yeah, you just go, you go Rog, you go Wout, and then you go Christoph Laporte. And sorry, Christoph, like that's just how it's got to be right now. But oddly, there was clearly no guidance from the team car into their ears on how to on how to deal with this thing. And as you come into the finale, Wout is kind of pushing. Uh, Roglic up to the front wants him to take it, kind of recognizing this logic. But Rog wants Laporte to have it. Laporte kind of puts his arms up and then puts his arms to the side, uh, trying to figure out, hey, what do we do here? And the three come across the line with Christoph Laporte taking the win. Absolute insanity. Never seen anything like this before with these three guys. I mean, it brings me back to when on the Tour de France stage um, two years ago after uh, Bernal had um, abandoned and, and you had... Richie Carapaz uh, coming in um, 
with uh, with his teammate and they were just like, you know, had their arms around each other and they're like, OK, how do we you know, h- how do we do this? You know, who who takes the win? Um, and then just came in side by side and and like let it let it fall um, how it went. This is the first time I've seen uh, any anything like that. And so how did this uh, finale go? Well, we had Christoph Laporte, Primoz Roglic and then Wout Van Aert. And so that's how the order went. And then it was at 19 seconds back that we had Pierre Latour, Mads Peterson, uh, Guillerme, Ivan, Couture, Ivan Cortina, uh, Garcia, Fred Wright, Jasper Philipson, and Florian Seneschal. And in this group is most everybody else. And so, like, let's look at the implications here. What we have now in the GC fight is everybody behind Roglic and Wow candidly now more than 20 seconds back that's that includes vlasov that includes easy gear see mcnulty was in that group you had louis leon sanchez nielsen paulus who made a move jack haig david gaudu almeida but then we had some guys even further back. So if you look at 36 seconds, so there's a, clearly another gap. Max Schockman was in the group 36 seconds back. That is a big amount of time to need to try to make up. Gino Mater there as well. Uh, that's not good. So on a day where you expected there to be zero GC implications, we have massive ones. Um, Christoph Laporte, <laughs> definitely not the one expected to win today. Um, although definitely looking really good this season. Uh, had some really good results. Um, I thought already when he got it, I mean, he was in the finale of Colonel Brussels Colonel literally getting caught with, you know, 50 to go. So clearly on good form and good legs. Um, but just an absolutely awesome victory for him. And, and Kata have to imagine the Roglic show and look for Wout Van Art to come back and, and probably win some stages. So, wow, what a day, something you thought you could sleep through and then went absolutely bananas. Uh, just awesome, awesome to see. So um, we'll be here to break down the rest of it. But then for now, thanks for listening to the Tour Breakaway. 